What question did you refuse to answer in a job interview? What's your zodiac sign? At first, I thought it was a joke, but he went on to explain in detail that it was very important that all the signs of his employees were compatible with his to prevent drama in the workplace. Then, he started telling me about past lives. It was a weird interview. Why should we hire you when you just got married and will probably be starting a family soon? I initially refused to answer, but couldn't resist by the end of the interview, telling them that I'd had my tubes tied for years and literally couldn't have kids. My race. They were interviewing to fill several positions at an office near downtown where they were in need of Spanish-speaking workers because the area served is mostly Hispanic. The interviewer asked me what is my race and where is my family from. He asked this because he saw that I am fluent in Spanish. I am mixed but look very white. He seemed a little perturbed that I was fluent in his native language. He kept questioning my race and why do I speak Spanish? I let him know that I have spoken Spanish since I first learned to speak. I had dual primary languages in my home. I took Spanish in high school and college. I was hired by college as a Spanish tutor, yet he doubted my knowledge because of my light skin. He did this to a girl I was chatting with in the waiting area too. I could hear her interview because they were doing them in cubicles, not private. With her, he insisted she couldn't really speak Spanish. The girl was black, but she was from Belize. Anyhow, we were both hired even though he failed us on our spoken language portions. She and I wrote grievances and had him removed, as well as our scores corrected. He interviewed another girl I knew who looks very Hispanic, but barely speaks Spanish, and he does not write it. He gave her a 100. At my office, I found out he had given anyone that looked white or black very low scores, even if they aced the interview. Well, you know what they say, another Another day, another case of casual workplace racism. What social media do I use and that I would be required to friend a member of the HR department? Luckily, nothing happened. There is a big trial going on at the time over employers' rights to spy on their employees online, so they didn't push it. This is kind of related to something I was thinking about the other day in that the internet used to be a specific place that you would go to, like, you know, just a computer. But nowadays, it's on your phone. It's connected to your work, your life in general. It's just inescapable now. Honestly, I think the internet was way cooler before it became main stream and like, you know, with the advertisements, corporations and stuff. And well, you could turn off the internet at a time, but now it's just interconnected with your whole life. And that kind of sucks. I mean, can I leave my phone at home when I go for a walk? Sure I can, but I'm also thinking about work emails that I might need to respond to immediately. And just overall, it's harder to pull yourself away from the internet than it ever was in the early 2000s. Anyway, it's just genuinely good that you didn't have to do that because privacy is important, including in the workspace. What church do you attend? I told them I didn't really think it was relevant to doing the job. They thought otherwise. In the course of one interview, I was asked, Are you married? Do you have kids? Are you pregnant? What do you plan on becoming pregnant? How old are you? The interviewer then proceeded to tell me she needed to ask these questions because the last LAA she hired was pregnant and left for maternity leave within five months, and the interviewer was not happy with that. The kicker, I was interviewing at a civil law firm and being interviewed by a paralegal. I'm a girl and have a trade and have always worked with only men. Most interviews bring up the subject in a polite way, like situational questions asking what I would do if a co-worker was being sexist, etc. One particular interview with a company called Redacted, the interviewer straight out asked if I have a boyfriend. I said no, more out of shock. He continued on to say that I'm very young and around the age where I will probably get pregnant. I just sat there and stared. He then asked me if I planned on getting pregnant because if so, they would not hire me. Every single question he asked was specifically about the fact that I'm a girl and there were no job-related questions. I just said, thanks, but no thanks. Well, if they made you that uncomfortable, it's probably for the best. The only reason why I think they might not have asked any work-related questions was probably because, as you already stated, this is an industry you are familiar with, I believe, and maybe your resume was just superb, so they didn't really feel the need to ask you any questions about that. I mean, from what you're saying, it sounds like they were already interested in hiring you, except they were worried about you going on maternity leave. Which, if I were to play devil's advocate and put myself in that position, yeah, it would be kind of annoying to hire someone, and then after a few months, it's just, well, blah, Bye. But at the end of the day, I also understand why women going out for jobs and careers would be really annoyed at that question, being asked regularly. I mean, it comes up a lot in this topic. I once got asked what my parents did for a living. It was for a cleaning position. I was like, what? 
This guy asked me a bunch of word puns and riddles. I answered one thinking he was joking, then asked him what the point was and he didn't know. Later in the interview, he asked me if I could promise I wouldn't get pregnant for my first year there. And in the end, I got the job. I had a few in the only interview I ever did for a farm machinery sales agent. Can you safely say that you won't have any serious accidents whilst working here? Have you ever been pregnant or are you going to become pregnant in the next eight months? Have you ever had a boyfriend and if yes, did you have SX while together? Are you still together? Again, I can understand the perspective and reasoning from an employer's standpoint of why they ask these questions, but to a degree it's just like, where do you get off? Do you have any medical or mental issues? My medical history is my business, not theirs. I work at a major university and we have an office of disability services which can assist you in accommodating a disability, etc. So I technically do have a disability according to the university's parameters and therefore I fall under this protection. I've been shopping around for a different job at the same institution and in one interview they actually asked me what my disability was. I was shocked they would ask since that is pretty expressly forbidden by university policy and refused to answer. I didn't get a call back but based on them asking, I didn't want to work there either. I may have dropped an anonymous note to HR about it. So I understand that this is to some degree not down, I guess, but I also actually don't really see the issue in asking. Like, I don't know, I've got learning difficulties, for example. If someone asks, I'm not really insulted by them asking. I'm more annoyed in situations where people make assumptions about me because I have a certain learning difficulty. What's even more annoying than that is when people just make assumptions based on their lack of knowledge on what I have. Like, I don't know, this one just seems kind of petty in my opinion. Would you and your wife be interested in this traveling swingers club I help run? We could show you the town, get you to meet new people. It'll be fun. I was the interviewer. I'm a guy. Interviewee was a girl. And in case you were curious about what question to never ask in an interview, this is among the top 10. No, I didn't answer it. I just said that we're out of time and I had to go. HR will show you out. Someone will be in contact with you. See you later. Goodbye. Nice knowing you. Too bad you can't stay. What happened was that she was banned from ever applying. And since Silicon Valley is so close knit, I'm sure the HR types got the word out that she was a walking asexual harassment suit waiting to happen. I had an employer actually ask if I was a Christian. I'm not. He said that they follow Christian principles in their business and they'd like to know how I would fit in. I told him that it's illegal to ask that question and I'm not comfortable answering it. He ended the interview right there. I didn't get the job, which I'm glad for because working there sounds like my personal hell. I should have sued and just taken it easy for a few years. The CIA asked me what laws I would be willing to break if I was hired by them. I didn't really know how to answer and I said I would have to know more about the situation. I didn't get the job. I may not refuse to answer a question outright, but depending on the personality of the interviewer, I will make jokes about the questions, especially if it's obvious that they think the questions are stupid too. The biggest one for me is, what is your biggest flaw? If I know the interviewer is receptive to jokes, I'll reply with something like, a low tolerance for irrelevant questions. We had a good laugh about it and moved on to the next question in the interview. Interview question at a small consulting firm in DC. Did great work, friends there with nice salaries and benefits. I put down on my resume as a consultant at another firm this line, paraphrasing for privacy and not doxing myself, optimized performance and logistics of new product line, increasing profit margins by 30% at big firm. It's one of my huge achievements and leaving out details was never a problem for any other consulting firms like McKinsey, for example. I didn't mention who that big client on the resume that I was working for was because most of them are supposed to be confidential. The interviewer's eye fell on that bullet and as I revealed a couple of details like industry, my role, how I did the job, the achievement, etc., she insisted on asking who the client was, which doesn't really matter at that point. I kept rebuffing her, stating that I can't reveal my clients or the product lines still in development at the time due to confidentiality agreements. This went on for five minutes until the interview basically derailed and she ended it, telling me that I was uncooperative and I shouldn't expect a call. After cursing my luck and damning that wretched woman, seriously, who insists on asking such a stupid question? I can't reveal who it is because I breach contract and in consulting, you should respect your client's privacy. I did get a call a couple of weeks later from a board member who heard about my interview and offered me a job. It was a good year and my interviewer got flack some months after she left the company because she started revealing details about her clients 
which got an entire team at that firm in trouble because of breach of contract. Big lesson, kids. If you have a confidentiality agreement that is still ongoing and hasn't expired, you should respect it, even in an interview for another job. Otherwise, kiss your career goodbye. I mean, it's kind of a good idea to just generally respect contracts that you sign in general, and if you're not sure about them, read them very, very carefully. Or pay someone to read them, because reading contracts can be super boring. I sat in on an interview for a PA with my boss. When on the subject of marriage and kids, my boss asked the interviewee if she had married out of love or if her family had arranged it. She answered love and we thought that was the end of it. He then proceeded to ask if she was raising her kids as Sikhs and if she would be comfortable working in an environment with lots of men. I cringed so much in that interview, but the lady held her own and is basically still working for us. There was no malice in what my boss was asking. He was genuinely just interested in her culture, but went the complete wrong way about it. Just the other week, when we were all out for a meal, he kept asking her if his pronunciation of basmati was right. The best of it is she came from an Indian family but has lived the Western culture all her life. She's just as clueless as he is, but finds it all very hilarious. I was actually asked for the username and password to my Facebook, Twitter, and any other social media accounts I may have. I flat said, no, that information will not be forthcoming. The interviewer looked up as though to say, just who the heck do you think you are? and replied, excuse me. I replied that I never saw the use or need for social media. I have the ability to instantly message, call, or go to meet people within my circle in person, and I felt that social media was a tool further used to divide us rather than bring us together. He just stared at me until I finally said, I follow a 3P rule when I'm online. I never post anything. I don't want my parents, a priest, or a predator finding out, which means you can rest assured that there will be no impropriety to harm your business. I'm here to make money. By by making you money. He continued to stare at me and I finally said, I'm sorry, I seem to be wasting your time. I thank you anyway and you have a wonderful day. I got a call three weeks later, same guy. He actually tried looking me up and couldn't find me or a reference to me. I didn't get the job, but I did get considered. The moral to this tale? Follow the 3P rule and never ever ever use your real name, nor should you ever allow anyone else to use your real name if you can at all control it. Okay, now first off, obviously, interviewer, massive invasion of privacy, stupid question to ask, but also, while right, this person definitely went off on something that they've been thinking about for a long time in their feelings of social media that just wasn't necessary. And I say that as a bit of a hypocrite because while it is my job to read these for you and give my thoughts on some of them, I do absolutely go on tangents. Rhea, so the interview questions can be very different from what we're used to in the West. It is common to ask what your parents do, if you're married or plan on getting married, how much alcohol you can drink. This is not to determine if you have a drinking problem, but because after work, drinking with co-workers is a big part of Korean work culture. So the more booze you can handle, the better. How much money you have, religion, and when you apply for a job, you have to send a photo of yourself along with your application. If you're not deemed good looking enough, and often if you're black or Indian or another undesirable race, you won't get the job. It is slowly changing, though. Anyone else pick up on the discomfort in my voice as I was quoting that? Why is a pretty girl like you looking for a job? You should just find a rich guy and get married. For context, I was fresh out of high school at 17 plus, and this was the first interview I had ever done in my life at a small shipping yard for the position of a clerk. I decided to go to college after that. It does get worse as I approach marriageable age, as constant barrages of questions on my plans to get married and how many kids I want to have get into the interview instead of what I want to bring to the table at work and discussing my career prospects. Women have a big challenge when it comes to being taken seriously at work, especially if you look a certain way. Yes, I do get a lot of probing why I didn't try my hands at sales, as it would be just too easy for you to get a lot of sales during the time I was at marketing previous salary. It's none of their business. I will talk about the salary range that I'm interested in, but answering previous salary questions will only screw you. That is certainly true. Never, ever, ever disclose your previous salary with a new potential employer. Well, I refuse to answer if I was religious and died a fornicator. Well, that's all right if you don't want to tell us, sir, because God already knows. I assume this was for an employer that had a very religious tilt. When I lived in D.C., I had an interview with the mayor's office. Mind you, 
do, he was a mayor I didn't particularly like. When I got there, it was like 75 people waiting in a big room. When it was finally my turn, they brought me into another room. The first five minutes were standard interview questions, but the two 20-year-olds conducting the interview were completely uninterested. Neither of them looked up from their Blackberries once. I was getting extremely irritated, as I knew I had much more political experience than them anyway. So when one of them, with her face still in her Blackberry, said, Tell me five things you love about Mayor Fenty. I had had it. I said, I think we're done here, and got up and left. That got them to look at me. Not a question so much as a request. Was a senior in college in 2012, so the job market was still for crap and anyone who had graduated college in the last four to five years was actively fighting for any and all open positions of any sort still. Be it in waiting tables, answering phones, landscaping, nannying, under the table work, and obviously any entry-level positions. So I managed to get an interview with a marketing firm. I'm sure most of you know where this is going. It was a direct marketing service. Where you go door to door. My first interview goes well, and I'm a bit confused as this was in an office park suite office. They purportedly have 55 employees, yet this office suite was two offices and a small front desk area for the secretary. Where was everyone's desks? I asked myself. Later that night, I received a call back for a second interview. So for a second weekend in a row, I head back to my hometown, miss my current job, and two weekends in a row worth of cash working at a late night restaurant and gas money for two round trips totaling in at around $100 in gas, two full tanks, and a loss of almost an entire $375 paycheck for that half of the month, plus a solid $150 in tips for each weekend missed. Showed up for the second interview and instead of sitting in that little office and answering more questions, meeting people around the office and the like, they take me and six other people outside. We're then told we will be going out in the field for the day and knocking on doors. None of us were told about this, so all four of us females are in interview suits in heels. I start immediately hounding the interviewer and insist I am being told where I'm being taken, and he says he isn't at liberty to disclose that. So I confrontingly state, let me get this straight. You want me, a 20-something female, to get into a car with out-of-state plates with three men I've never met before to go somewhere unknown, to walk around somewhere unknown for an unknown amount of time on the fly and I have to turn my cell phone off? He just looks at me like a moron after I've spelled out how sketchy this all is. So after some awkward silence, I continue, how dare you lie to myself and all of these other clearly desperate folks about every aspect of this job and cost me money to get here. Screw you if you think I'll come with you and screw you again if you think I won't go into details on this to the BBB. It's then that he flips out and follows me as I head back into the office park. The interview room now has been retransformed into the CEO's office, nameplate and everything. When they asked me what I was doing, I demanded my resume back from their pile and told them I'd be spreading the word and make sure others know before coming in here. They freaked out, offered to pay me back for my gas to try and prevent me from reporting them. I let them write me a check and just as I was leaving their office slash interview room, a new slew of kiddos my age were shuffling in for their ill-fated interviews. I warned them all loudly and cursed out the CEO again and was followed out by all eight people. They were supposed to interview again. Being a journalism student, I did the only thing worse than reporting them, which I also did. I got in contact with a local reporter for the paper who was a friend of mine and got them to run an article about scam companies and interviewing vulnerable and desperate recent grads. Their company logo made the header of the page. I actually personally have some uh, experience with fraud companies. I did an interview in 2019 and I joined a company for a little bit. I won't go into details on what it was, but I always got this very weird feeling about everyone there. Not not everyone there, but the people who owned the place, I guess. And as it turned out, when I was discussing it with someone that I worked with a while later, like a few years later, and we ran into each other, I asked about it, and they were like, oh yeah, they were actually using it as a cover to sell the devil's letters, and who knows what else. And I was just like, oh my freaking god, I knew that place was off. After that, I was glad I was only there for maybe a month or two. 
true. This was during a mock interview while I was in college. The professor had her husband come in and we had to go in one by one and do an interview just like in real life. Well, everyone is going in and coming out smiling, not taking too long, so I thought it would be a cakewalk. My turn is next. I go in and everything is going smoothly. He takes a look at my resume and sees that I was in the military. He asks, tell me about your time in the military. So I tell him what I did, that I worked with a variety of different people from different backgrounds with different views on life and opinions and that I supervise people, etc. He says, okay, good, uh, and continues with the interview, asks a few more questions, then says, tell me about your time in the military. I figured maybe he didn't realize he already asked that question or maybe it was a test, so I repeated what I said. He starts turning slowly in his chair, looking at the ceiling and says again, tell me about your time in the military. I just looked at him. He stopped spinning in his chair and looked at me. After about 20 seconds, he says, okay, we're done here. I got a B. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories. And if you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot. Linked in the description below.